So here you are. You've laid your fears and doubts on the bonfire <laughs> for me to burn the hell out of them. Now I step out into the center of this effin' coliseum with a torch and a gas can in my hand. In front of me, a crowd of naked people backing up against the walls. I'm in the middle of things, as you can see. And in fact, I am the thing. Oh yes, I created myself. I've put it all under my control. You get what I mean? It's strange. I actually exist in the real world, I think. And I'm totally free of stereotypes. Oh yeah, my world has infinite possibilities without the daily junk food of television cliches. <gasps> without the catchwords and slogans that are imposed by governments, or by the boot tube, or by your precious internet. <laughs> so here I am, right here, and I'm real. You're staring at your computer screen right now. But are you there? Hey, hello? And is there any way to prove that to me? And so it appears that you don't exist, and I do. I always have something to say. And what do you have to say? Think about it. Give me two bruises and some chips! Mmm, how revolting. Or, honey, I need to use the bathroom. Well, in fact, you sit on the can and text your lover. Or, pardon me, jerk off. Your whole entire life is nothing but lies, porn, domestic spats, internet addiction, and mobile slavery. Well, am I wrong? <laughs> now tell me, have you ever done anything that's actually out of the box? Never. And you want to know why you won't be able to? Because it lies outside your comfort zone. And you're packed into it like you're packed inside a reinforced polypropylene bag. You are slabs of meat. Squeezed between your daily routines and your work. <coughs> Next one in the line, please. Or am I wrong? Maybe I'm mistaken. Go ahead and correct me. For instance, could you give away your cell phone to some random person? Huh? Now that's a killer question. Could you go right now and reformat the hard drive on your computer? Isn't it freaky? Did you shit yourself? Do you know why you won't do it? It's because it would be like you're committing suicide. You don't exist without this stuff. Have you ever done anything, anything, anything at all on your own? Have you ever just followed your own decision instead of waiting for the order? Just do it, huh? So it looks like I am the real one, and you are just an underdeveloped figment of someone's imagination. You haven't been drawn yet. You're gonna have to try awfully hard if you want to prove that it's the other way around. And you can consider yourself a real living being. And most importantly, this is not a game. This is a... Oops. Uh, close the door. Get all of the young children out of here. And put your hands where I can see them. Do it! Today, I'm going to tell you about a joyful and pleasant pastime. A piece of pocket-sized happiness for anyone. A path to pure pleasure that can begin anywhere. And at any time at all. And if you want to play along, there's only one tool that you'll need at hand. Are you intrigued? Wonderful. It's still a mystery who owns the patent on this activity. But the Bible's very own Onan has a copyright on his own ism for it. The second son of Judah, Onan was required by tradition to marry his older brother's widow and impregnate her. But Onan was a savvy chap, so he slipped out of his duty and spilled his seed right on the ground. It's a mistake to think he was masturbating. In fact, he just didn't finish inside Tamar. Do you understand why? They liked things the way they were. And just for that, he had to pay with his life. They say that 98% of all men masturbate, and the other 2%, they just don't admit it. Well, you understand why. But as a matter of fact, the truth is much more serious. It's not only men. All pubescent humans masturbate. Just some more than others. Uh-huh. Those are the statistics. It's our nature. And we can't escape it, no matter what we try to do about it. All of mankind. The pardon. <sighs> it changes the view a bit on our rather serious world, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All of these gloomy people around us, and the Congress, and the President. Uh, although the President probably doesn't have time for all that. Well, there you have it. You have something in common with folks like Napoleon, Socrates, Hitler, <laughs> and the President. 
in ancient Egypt. By the way, the pharaohs ceremoniously masturbated into the Nile. And the Greeks had no problems with it whatsoever. They considered it the norm. And we won't even get into India and China, where the process was practically sacred. In the enlightened Europe of the 18th century, booklets claiming that masturbation led to blindness, epilepsy, hairy palms, gonorrhea, and loss of mental functions were exceedingly popular. But you know what? I bet everyone was doing it anyway, if they had hands. Now, of course, there were outcasts. For example, Kant. Now, there was a guy who thought jerking off was a sin worse than killing yourself. Oh, but nowadays, you and I know very well what is what. Or am I wrong? Today, there are claims that frequent masturbation can actually help prevent prostate cancer. Others have found a connection between this act and death from coronary heart disease. While some say that those who actively masturbate don't suffer as greatly from swings in blood pressure. Some claim that hand jobs weaken potency, while others say it helps flush those old low motility sperm out of the reproductive tract. And for just as long as these debates and battles have been raging on, the world has been passionately doing what? That's right, playing with themselves. And, uh, where are your hands right now, by the way? <laughs> All right, hotshots. No small talk or bullshit today. Just cold reality and stark naked truth. Don't want to know what freaking scared? Door's here. What are you waiting for? Thanks for sharing. Get the hell out. I've had it with your snobby fed-up attitude and your non-stop whining. Why are you smiling? I said get the hell out! This is my territory! <laughs> ah. I've gotten thousands and thousands of comments. Been there, done that. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, this is awesome. Teen solipsism, blah, blah. I'm adding this to my favorites list. Heard it before, the same old shit. What have these commenters ever done in their entire insipid, boring lives that's interesting and new? I mean, have they ever created a single thing? From what I've seen, they just smear nothing but crap on my comment section. And that's it! Most people have hands, heads, and asses. And what have they produced for them except shit? They shit on the internet while they shit in the toilet. On the net, in the toilet. On the net, in the toilet. What's gonna be left for your stupid kids and grandkids once you're gone? <laughs> Unfunny jokes and random blogs that nobody ever reads? <sighs> then there's this crap. Oh, I've already heard all that before. Why don't you come up with something new so I can laugh my ass off? <laughs> There are a Googleplex of boob tube channels for your entertainment. So you can suck down sappy gags all day and never think at all! Now you can zone out 24-7 without ever turning on your flappy brain! Eat shit, laugh! 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 People. Yeah, you. Take a look at yourselves. Billions of comments all over the web, and they're mostly shit. Shit, shit, shit. And only a few get the actual message. You are slow on the draw, human beings. You are slow on the draw. If you've already heard everything, then why haven't you done anything to make changes in your lives? Hmm? You're so damn tough and certain you're right, aren't you all? And what if you got chained to a radiator with a baseball bat sticking right in your face? Where will that toughness and certainty go then? Hmm? Into your pants with all your adrenaline! <laughs> you didn't duck in time! <laughs> Seven zero! You've got to be nimbler, my precious. They say I'm the same trash as the rest. Guess what, my darling friends? Given the alleged value system of the majority, I am far worse than that! Far worse! Well, I wonder now what your comments will be like. Or maybe get off your ass and change the system. Hey, do you like prostitutes, friend? I totally love them. After all, it's the oldest profession on Earth. Hookers have a lot in common with politicians, journalists, and actors. All of whom can either be artists or poseurs, turning cheap, dirty tricks or answering a true calling. It's easy to say that women who, voluntarily or not, got into this craziness are weak, stupid, and spineless sluts. But are they not just satisfying demand? We all know that without them, some would go bonkers from loneliness, fear, frustration, and all kinds of complexes. I say, without a smidgen of irony, 
Most of these women, who by whatever twist of fate became professional satisfiers of pathetic male fantasies, are far more decent and fair than their despicable clientele. I totally get guys who say sex with hookers is the purest, most honest kind of sex anyone can ever have, while a free-of-charge cookie can cost so much more, leaving behind such a residue of shame and cynicism for all involved that no matter how hard you try to, you can never wash it off. And so I ask you, is there anything new that can be said about this storied topic of old? Not a goddamn thing. We can only shrug our shoulders. Or as we walk along the streets watching 13 and 14 year old girls hop into random cars, we can be dumbfounded again and again from the sheer inconceivability of this scene. Or am I wrong? Oops! Mm. But what's this monument? It's to an unknown, um, it says it's for an unknown hooker. What the? Well, why the hell not? For the boys who go missing in action in senseless wars, they build entire parks as memorials. Isn't this also a battlefield? Isn't the world of prostitution one big slaughterhouse? Of course it's naive to think that fantasies about Prince Charming will soon stop turning the heads of girls dreaming of rom-com lives, where a handsome man in a fancy car sweeps them off their feet and puts a ring right on their finger. <sighs> Let the prudes grind their perfect teeth to dust right now. Cause baby, this bronze beauty is gonna stand somewhere along Fifth Avenue or the Champs-Elysees, some glorious main street of our cities. I command it. A giant woman in a provocatively short dress, rain or shine. An eyesore eternally waving horny men down, forcing every passerby to engage their brains and decide for themselves. What do they think of it? And what's this monument? It's in honor of the noble hooker. An actual prostitute monument? What for? What for? Because they're good looking, of course. <laughs> Hi there. There are a lot of you. What are you munching on over there? Ah, I thought it was potted meat for sure. All right then. Take a little break from your meal. And let's play make believe. Imagine that you're a rich manufacturer, transporting spices and brocade fabric by ship. Long voyage, comfy cabin, vast sea, Beautiful. But one fine day, rats under the deck start crapping in your spices and gnawing on your precious fabric. What are you gonna do to get rid of these wretched pests? Hmm? Simple. You put five rats in one barrel, lock them in there together for a couple of weeks until the only thing left in the barrel is one single rat who gobbled up his brothers when he got hungry. Now we have a what? Right, we have a cannibal. Somebody that out of all possible meals prefers what? Right, the meat of his own species! Now you release him in the hold and... <laughs> True genius is so simple. Hamsters, wolves, and some cats eat their newborns and for them this behavior is completely normal. Adorable little lemmings falling to their deaths when there isn't enough food to go around is also normal, right? To say nothing of the fact that meat from one of your own species digests far better than any other food. Thanks to the similarities in protein and salt compositions of the victim and the eater. By the way, cannibalism as a cultural phenomenon has never disappeared from our little planet. We're all aware of its religious and sexual forms, but it's a rather exotic topic for curious people and field experts. Yet we, the genuine humanists, dismiss their absurd narrow-mindedness and fickle moral qualms because we are much more focused on the economic dimension. You better listen up. The biggest problem faced by humankind is not global warming, but overpopulation and famine. In the last 50 years, the total number of people who were born and died equals the births and deaths in all the rest of human history. In other words, we're getting a bit too many. You get what I mean? The terrible day is coming when all wimps are going to learn. We are our own food. In underdeveloped societies, the cannibalism will happen randomly on the principle of who can I catch? Pretty much the same as how they mate. But for civilized societies, it should and certainly will be a more industrial process. Just imagine, farms, spacious and well-lit, where in comfortable stalls utilizing the latest technology, they breed select two-legged livestock. You know, the animals who permit themselves to become food end up as the winners in the mortal interspecies battle for control over the planet. Did you know that? How many tigers on Earth? Not very many. Lions? How about bears? Very few. But now riddle me this. How many cows live on Earth? There are billions of them. Understand? Now listen up. Has it ever occurred to you to wonder who might have already started the process of turning us into livestock?
Physiological and sociological conditioning is already happening. Just look at this. Cultivation of stem cells is one. Use of serum from abortive material in medicine, second. Popular movies about the living dead devouring human flesh, three. Laws about euthanasia, four. Shawarma or gyros made from who knows what sold on every corner, five. Do you even know what that stuff is? There's no need to be scared of this bright future. No crisis will menace us ever again. The vegans and the tree huggers will be downright giddy. Nobody will harm their beloved animals anymore. Although, maybe those vegans and greenies will go into the very first batch of universal protein ration. Huh? Give it a think. My wonderful friends, fine citizens from free democratic countries everywhere, I, the greatest and best-known long-lived viral advertisement of them all, I would like to wish all of you an extremely joyous new year. What do you keep looking at? Oh, message, message. This past year was as big as it could be, very eventful, full of all the things, happiness and misery, things found and things lost. Everyone did their own stuff, got something, gave away something, somebody lost a wallet, somebody found it, somebody got robbed, well, somebody made a fortune, some people tallied up votes, others pumped oil. All of these small, controversial, heroic deeds make up the life of a great country, our beloved homeland. Its heartbeat consists of the actions of each and every one of us, and I know in the future we'll withstand every test the world wants to throw at us, yet again proving our right for a special place in history. In fact, we've all been working on it pretty hard already. Some too hard, really. You guys are shouting so darn much that you've completely stopped using your heads at all. I say the words jerk off, and you think the only thing I'm talking about is jerking off. I talk about prostitution, and you think the only thing I'm referring to is actual hookers. I talk about eating one another, and all you see is cannibalism. Are you really that stupid? Are you really that stupid? Are you really that stupid? But the state got exactly what I meant, because it listened and was frightened. And then certain governmental organizations dropped some very strong hints as to where my place was. Well, my dear friends, thanks for shouting. I'm not sure if I shall have the pleasure of seeing you in the new year, but I do want to appeal to every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. Go deeper than just thinking about it. Make a sincere and conscious decision. Are you ready to journey with me further? further, 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 further. And so, happy 2000 whatever, my friends. The most offensive crime is to call on people to stand up and express their independence and freedom. Uh, it's a road that leads straight to chaos and mutual obliteration. Uh, I just knew not what I was doing. But I understand now. <laughs> but if you just give me the chance, I'll explain it to all of them. Hey, you! Do you really think my true mission was to awaken your noble and precious so-called independence? Are you totally stupid? The masses' destiny is to be obedient and harbor illusions and fears. If you mishandle freedom, my friends, then it will tear you to bits. Fear freedom! Be afraid! Well, did I say everything right? Huh? Now here's what I really think about all of this stuff. The truth is that life has one small but vital element. Eventually, children grow up. They get a bit bigger, a bit freer, a bit more educated than their fathers, understand? They're no longer willing to stand in endless lines, run, get you another beer, or carry away your garbage. The children want something more than that! But Daddy replies that he's not interested in hearing the opinion of a spoiled little freedom-loving snot. Oh no! He wants you to be an A. A sheep, A face in the crowd, and not the individual you are. The idea is simple. The system controls you as long as you are all the same. But if everyone starts thinking outside the box, the system won't have enough rules or methods or hands to spank each and every one. You are torn between the romanticism of stubborn opposition and the desire to adapt and conform and survive. That's when you get a sock in the jaw. You're just a speck. Get to the back of the line. But pay attention. The most subtle and the highest revolt is merely the ability, in any situation, to always remain true ah! to yourself and proudly carry your identity like a flag. This has nothing to do with a sense of self-importance. One can be small while remaining big. 
I forgot whose quote that was. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. It's from simple to complicated. As a first step, write I, me, myself, and mine everywhere you possibly can with big uppercase letters. In documents, emails, blogs, and articles everywhere. It's so easy, but soon you will discover how difficult it is because it will start raising questions. But for all the rest of you, I repeat, be afraid of freedom. It's capable of... Yes, you're right. I'm quite confident you are the one. The one who got the message. Then why am I looking at you like you're a piece of shit? But do you ever look at people any other way? Just relax, groovy brothers. I understand each one of you. He wanted to be a musician, but instead cultivates blisters on his butt from his office chair. She dreamt of being an actress, but all she learned is to fake orgasm, performing all her greatest dramatic roles in the kitchen. So, what do we get? One third of life goes to sleeping, another third to eat shit laugh, and the remaining third to hating the beloved job. Yet you could have been doing something real. Do you get that? But where did your precious dream go? But don't fret, my dears. You see, we're all like that. Separately, each of us is a personality with a capital P. But once there are two of us, one has to be the piece of shit. Each one scrutinizes the other, avidly searching for personality flaws. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, he still lives with his parents. <laughs> <laughs> she got knocked up and now he's got to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ancient wheels this doofus drives. Can you even believe it? <clears throat> and she's got no boobs and she's growing a mustache. This unbridled hatred and scorn that you feel for each other. This mutual venom is the only thing that makes you into a unified whole at all. I'm a good man surrounded by bad men. I am honest surrounded by crooks. A genius in a land of fools. I'm D'Artagnan and the rest of you suck! But if everyone smells like shit to you, maybe it's because you crapped yourself. Yet you wonder, why is it that I always seem to be getting fucked in my civic hole? By the government, by moves from the idiot box, by all the ass lickers. Well, how else can you treat a herd where everyone thinks of each other as a bunch of moronic idiots? Hmm? How hard do you need to be pummeled and prodded until you finally see yourselves in others? And instead of saying me and them, you finally say we. Did they not explain this to you on the evening news on Primetime Network TV? Of course not. They told you to be unique and nurture and foster your otherness. Am I right? Well, keep it up. Be original. Become the champion of ass sores at your office. Or get an Oscar for best faked orgasm. Cheat your business partners out of their money. Tear at each other's throats, arguing about who understood Freeman better! So, tell me. Did your big fancy collective consciousness actually get the message? Or do you still feel sure you yourself are the chosen one? I'd like to play a little game with you. For one measly minute or so, let's forget your precious IQ and enter the dark realm of imagination. Look closer. Imagine there was some shift in the old space-time continuum that sent you thousands of years into the past. But you have a flash drive bursting with gigabytes of wonders of the modern world. Music, books, pictures, videos. You aren't just some little prick any longer, but the pinnacle of smarts, the top of the big pyramid of civilization. They're all dying to pay you incredible treasures in exchange for all this knowledge. World leaders from every nation. You're a demigod-like genuine phenomenon. You are the path to true enlightenment, dude. <laughs> Well, everybody's gathered together, excited and waiting, ready to pay heed to your knowledge, to learn from you, and so forth. Thousands of eyes are staring. The entire world has stopped to hear what you'll say, expecting miracles and light. Now pay attention. How do you get the data off of the flash drive? Because you don't really know anything. The only proof you have that you're from the future is this little hunk of plastic and metal. You've got nothing to tell the mob. And without proof, anything you say to them is going to sound like... <laughs> And at best, this is where you'll end up. So yeah, my precious smarty pants, without all your usual technical support, you're nothing but a useless little dumb two-legged farter. But then, of course, setting up a free email box, turning in a ready-made essay, voting via text message, or installing a plug-in are each and every one crucial, necessary, brilliant skills. <laughs> 
but they're not gonna do one damn thing to save your neck! Right. Now let's think about things on a global scale. Any of you know the gunpowder formula? Can you make penicillin? Do you know how to take crude oil and turn it into gasoline? Is there anything at all you could give these poor dumb schmoes from the past, huh? Come on, think! Use your brain and start like parasites. For example, to generate electricity, all you need is an orange or a potato. It would be enough to stick a small golden cross along with a silver spoon into it for these two contacts to produce two volts. Did you know that? I'm well aware that my words will not convince you, which is why I'm prepared to show you something that is significantly more substantial. I happen to bring along with me a nano-quantum crystallic hyperhydropneumatic information core with thousands of petabytes of information! Voila! And now, this amazing device will transport every wo- uh, 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 um, Or not. Uh, does anybody have an intrasystemic figurative synthesis compiler? <laughs> I hear this everywhere I go. Freeman, what should we do? Give us a sign. Start a revolution. We will follow you. Uh, the answers to all of these questions you already know, but you get a kick out of playing the part of wide-eyed innocent little girls. All right. I shall extract the answer from the depth of your tiny and hopeless craniums, and he who has ears to hear, let him see. Now close your eyes, and don't open them until I tell you to. Close them. I told you to close your damn eyes! Uh-huh. I see we came to an agreement. And rightly so. No point in staring at the screen. Today, the most important thing will happen somewhere else. So let's begin. Imagine yourself sitting on top of a beautiful hill, surrounded by fragrant herbs, flowers, trees. Your breathing is smooth and even. One, two, Three, you're sinking into deep meditation, into the cosmos of your infinite consciousness. Everything that worried you now dissolves, and you slowly drift to where even time disappears into the eternal now. And now you're coming back to your normal state. Take a look at <gasps> your hands, <gasps> your legs. What's going on? Why, your physical body has decomposed completely. You have become a skeleton! <laughs> and with the first ray of the sun, you crumble to dust. And what's left is only pure consciousness. Absolute, utter freedom! <laughs> no more envy for your neighbors, no senseless spite, old grievances, greed, fear, all that foul-smelling dead weight that dragged you into the world's filth waiting to ambush you in the fetid basements of life. At long last, the path is open wide, and it makes you feel like exulting and embracing the whole world with pure love. Now open your eyes and take a long look at what we've done here. Watch carefully now. It seems like nothing has changed, right? Well, did you hear? The gathering storm bangs a tom-tom of thunder and etches a new reality with bolts of lightning. And soon even a child will be able to find ten fundamental new distinctions here. Are you able to recognize the new? Take a closer look. You'll see that the road gets cut by the footsteps of a walker. It's not bad. I never said money was bad. I respect any kind of religion, no matter how slavish it might be. Ah, you didn't realize, huh? Well, don't blow a gasket on me or anything. Chill, okay? Ready? Money is God. 
and you thought that religion is just the Christians, Buddhists, shamans. Of course it isn't. You're not that stupid. In this day and age, the only universal religion is money. The different currencies are like Catholicism, Protestantism, Judaism, Buddhism. Look, in essence, money is your god. Everyone believes in it, it's the source of everything, and it can even work miracles from time to time. Wow. This god has apostles, millionaires, whose sacred lives you examine with such enthusiasm. Each of you regularly takes the sacrament of communion, receiving an envelope that contains a piece of the holy flesh. Ah. Just for shits and giggles, go ask anyone, how much money do you make? They'll crap themselves like you asked them to confess their gravest sins. And all of those crisp little bills, they're icons. These bills, they are not just some old pieces of paper printed with ink. No, they are nothing less than the body of your god. They are born in a sacred place no mere mortal can enter. Then these godly pieces of paper come into human hands. And then, tired, wrinkled, and dirty, they are burned in special furnaces to rise again like the phoenix, that they may walk their earthly path once more. Everyone touches them. Take out your wallet for a sec. Imagine the journey each bill had to take to end up right there in your sticky little hand. Who is the first to crinkle it? And where is it going next? A bum, a syphilitic, a prostitute, the president, and yourself? You all practice sacraments with the same scraps of paper. People, wake up. All this money circulates in order for you to give it your precious energy. See, money's value is backed by labor. Without you in the mix, money has no meaning. The fact is, money is nothing but the product of a regular printing press. Anybody, anywhere, could print their own money. Of course, it will not be backed by the collective unconscious, but by an individual! You were divided so that they may rule. Money's common property, sure, but yours is yours and mine is mine, right? Money costs a great deal. People cost nothing because you're priceless. Since you have proved that you can make a god from any old myth, and you're ready. Every word that I utter makes you blast out exceedingly thoughtful. You know what that looks like? I tell you, people, looks like you're out of bread. You need to buy some bread. You look at me dumbfounded, jaws drop, eyes bulging in terror, and then the roar comes. Bread! We got no bread! Free in hell! Give us some bread! Etc. Hey, grocery stores around the corner. I feel pixels running up and down my spine from the questions dangling over me. What? Everybody has questions for me? But all of these are questions you really should be asking yourselves. Or do you think a cartoon character is going to storm out into the streets and change your life? You are insane. My life is entertained by yours no more than yours is entertained by mine. But I also have a question. What are you waiting for? You boil up with bile in your comments. You write me emotional emails. You're eating, shitting, and laughing. And waiting. You're waiting for me to tell you what you need to do. <laughs> You're just a bunch of lazy cowards! I can't actually climb out of the internet! You'd have to be some kind of dumb goat to not understand that! Yes, before I came along, there was something torturing you from the inside. Some worm burrowing through your withering brain cells. But then Freeman takes the stage. Well, hi there. Time to disco! Everybody follow the cartoon guy! Yahoo! Everyone is happy! Freeze. I don't think for you guys. I show you the way to think for yourselves. What? It's not cake? Wake up. Freeman doesn't owe you anything. You owe... Yourselves, my friends.
There are some people who put an end to war. Some change the way people live for the better. Others free people from laws that don't make sense anymore. And you? Uh, oh right. You wait for an animated character to give you instructions. <laughs> Wake up, people. You are lucky to have me in the first place. Things like this, they only happen one time in a thousand years. <laughs> and the length of time left is... Watch and don't dare blink or you'll miss your very favorite 25th frame. Here it is. <laughs> Again, I emerge from behind the invisible door into the dim, dim light of your consciousness. Let me ask you all for a dance. A waltz, please. Let's divide into pairs and start twirling. Twirling, dividing, dividing. I want you to keep splitting up into thousands of nations, classes, groups, clubs, and sects. You're so different. <laughs> Even, Even when, when it's, it's just, just two of you, you still manage to rip each other's guts out! Ever taken a good look inside yourself? Let's take a little peek now. Deeper, and go deeper, and go deeper. <laughs> look, how many facets! <laughs> You're not a human. You're a diamond. All right, then. Now let's examine you from every point, Poopsie. You scorn your scumbag boss because he's a self-enamored idiot, don't you? <laughs> but you're tactful not to show your feelings, right? But how come he's the boss and you aren't, huh? Moving on to the significant other in your little primetime soap opera. You're picking a fight. You really want to end it, but you're kind of feeling a little bit awkward. There's just no time for a serious talk, but for a hookup on the side and a couple of drinks, there's somehow more than enough time. Or am I wrong? Now you're in a the theater. They're doing Hamlet. And you just want to fart so much. But there's all these people, and it's the play's climax. You put your game face on, you grind your teeth, and squeeze, waiting for the loud applause. Bravo, bravo. And here is your bed. You're unmasked, the real you, snoring and farting and drooling. This is the triumph of your individuality. Make a note of that. You're so different, different, different. How many of there are you? Hello, social schizophrenia! Have you ever counted just how many yous there are? There are just billions of you schizo friends out there with zero chance you'll ever agree on anything. What are you looking at? You got nothing to say? Well, well then, then, I do! Just be honest with yourself for once. Do you want to be a Mr. Super Mega Bumpy Brain? Be one! Become the ultimate wacky psychopath! <laughs> the Napoleon of the universe! Freeman's formula is simple. You are either a predictable puppet or an uncatchable individual raised to the zillionth power! Strain yourself like this even more! Show that your facets are incredible and limitless! Okay, that's right. Now relax your butts. Applause, please. You're staring at me through your 3D glasses, because without them I look like some blurry blot of color creeping up on you through all of these obstacles. But I'm the penalty flag on a dirty play into which I blow my nose and yell with all my crazy mouths. Raise my eyelids. <laughs> Blah, 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 Mr. Freeman. What does that look mean? Do you really think I don't know who you are or why it is you've come here to our disco? <laughs> or maybe you have something that we are not aware of yet. All of these calls to make everybody free, I'm sick of it. Why did you come here again and get in our way? Hmm? There have been a lot of smarty pants like you before this. And even supposing that tens of thousands follow thee in the name of freedom. Tell me, what will become of the billions? The billions that are too lazy to climb up off their asses for the sake of abstract values. Hey, they just want to be happy as well, right? Or don't you consider your prime demographic to be human any longer? Hmm? Freedom is the right to decide for yourself. What are you mumbling over there? Are you even aware of the time in which you find yourself? Because today's freedom is the possibility of clicking on thousands of channels, downloading free porn. It's basically doing stuff that you're not going to get punished for, and that's all. And the human herd has already embraced this completely. 
You cannot possibly imagine how insanely much payola we shelled out to guarantee this idea would take hold. Now they are convinced that a human being is not just free on his own, but has to go out and earn money so that he can buy freedom. And now they have their purpose in life. Look at them. They're happy, you see? They want to work and to earn, but most importantly, to spend, spend, spend on all their sin. It gives them a high, realizing how they can go out and buy justification for any kind of shit. And we have a price. A price for any kind of filth. Hmm. It's even got that. <laughs> yes, yes. It's got everything and more. One thing, though, I don't understand is why did you come? All of your cheers and chants, subliminal messages, incognitos, all your... Prophetic perplexities, riddles, and alchemic symbols. We tried all a person can try long ago. And long before you ever did, we discovered this formula. Ready, miracle, mystery, and authority. And you use this exact formula, don't you? Me? Yeah, no way I can compete with you. I'm just an animated character with a funny voice while you're an actual, real-life person. With your intellect and your experience, you're practically a god. All my verbalized thoughts definitely fall woefully short of your fancy inquiring mind's research. Whatever I spew on here could be said better by you, my friend. But you just don't need to. You can express your public stances by simply clicking the like button or with a smug comment. So what? And take notice that no one will dare to reproach you with dialectic relativism. <laughs> Definitely no one will reproach you with that. It must be awesome being you. There once was a wise old teacher. He was so great that people didn't even understand what they could learn from him. Some said he used to be some kind of filthy rich and powerful businessman, but then he forsook the vanities of the world after realizing the true nature of life. And then one seeker, the very bravest of all of them, comes to him and says, Oh, great and wise teacher! I'm disappointed in this world. It's rotten to the very core. Help me obtain the vision of truth, please. And then the teacher answered, Okay, I shall impart to thee the truest knowledge. But first, could you help me out by bringing me a gizmo that can do the most amazing thing? And the teacher whispered something right into the seeker's ear. Overjoyed, the seeker ran off to buy the gizmo. He asked, but nobody knew a thing about it. And he felt too embarrassed to come back empty-handed. So he went to another town, then another, further and further, but nobody anywhere had ever heard of such a device. So many long years later, the seeker, who by then was a businessman who owned many amazing device factories, returned to the place he'd first heard of the rare gizmo device thingy. And he brought with him a whole trainload of amazing equipment. The seeker was pleased with himself. He had designed and produced things that had never existed before. He had to be worthy to learn the truth now, right? But the teacher's hut was empty. The seeker had come too late for the most important lesson of his life. He ordered the devices he'd brought with him to be given to the townsfolk, and he settled into the teacher's hut. But soon he was visited by new seekers. They asked, Oh, great teacher! What must we do to grasp the true meaning of things? The teacher smiled. Okay, I'll tell you. But first, could you bring me a little gizmo that turns into the most amazing <laughs> And he whispered something into the seeker's ears. Well, did you listen to the story? So what? Leaders of planet Earth. If you have found this, it means that at least humanity has survived. Those of us living back when this was made have no idea what you've done with the world. We understand that you are under enormous pressure. The pressure to try and institute change from inside of a thoroughly corrupted system. But you made the choice to be a leader, and with that decision comes responsibility. So right now, speaking to you, as the insanity pushes us closer to the precipice, I want you to look in the mirror and say how you acted upon the oath you took. 
Did you take the sacred power granted to you to simply play the part of a game show host in another season of Eat Shit Laugh? Did you keep preaching about the rule of law while those seeking justice were mocked, ridiculed, or even killed in jails? Did you keep telling us how our economies were growing as you lined your pockets at the expense of massive inequality that crushed the standard of living for your country's workers? Did you keep dumping crap into the earth and sky until there was nothing clean to eat, drink, or breathe? Or maybe, just maybe, you said enough is enough, and you finally decided to fight the madness. All we wanted was law, order, and freedom. Was it really too much to ask? That people practice civil obedience and actually follow the laws that they pass? Were all your words about freedom and democracy nothing but empty marketable slogans for baseball caps, bumper stickers, and coffee cups? Were your elections actually free or nothing but rigged dog and pony shows? So which was it? Did you keep your oath? Can you proudly show this artifact to the world as proof of our progress? Can you? Or have you decided to keep this to yourselves along with those files on UFOs? This part is very clear. You're nothing but a pawn, and you'll remain a pawn until you play. The rules are clear. Take what they give you, give away what you have to, and the difference is yours. The question is, how big is the difference? Are you really intending to win? Well, why not? There are lots like me, and we're the actual players. Because on one side of us are the real cattle who let TV do the thinking for them, while on the other is power who believe that we are shit and feeble-minded cattle. Over in the barn, they want us to take care of them. But a long time ago, they gave up on themselves, and now they won't lift a single finger. While those who have real power became more than the rest. Became gods. They sit so high up that they can't see us as either a serious enemy or a trusted friend. They have only one problem, that they're not immortal. That just leaves you and me. Sometimes I benefit you, other times you me. Everyone plays a game of their own. <laughs> Think you're a player, do you? I play like the great ones. Take the authorities. Quite unceremonious, but they do have a few lively plays up their sleeves with the people. Every couple of months, they let them blow off steam. Elections, Black Friday, a new auto plant, the latest installment of Star Wars, the Super Bowl. And the people just gobble it up. But when people have holes in their pockets and nothing to eat, who's responsible for that? So now, without their beer and football, they need a... Sacrifice. And you can be certain that power will provide them with a patsy. And it'll be us. Understand? So that is the game. Here are people who don't care about themselves, and here's authority that doesn't care about them either. And here we are in the middle, who sort of owe something, but what? And to whom? <laughs> it's not clear. How pure and simple. You're more naive than you look. But you're right in that we are like butter that is spread between a thin layer of caviar and moldy bread. Which reminds me of a fairy tale. Once there lived a poor wolf, and nearby lived a very powerful and rich fox. They grew up together, were in the same class at school, but now they're in different social classes. The fox's life was like a fairy tale. One day the wolf came to him and said, Teach me to do it. I'm tired of my life and I want to play with the big boys. I want to live like you. Tell me what to do. The fox answered, Don't sweat it. I'll fix up a place for you. You'll have a cushy job. You'll sit in a chair, quietly catch fish. By the rules. Don't fuss. Take a lot here, a little there. Anything will do. So the wolf nervously looked around and saw that everyone was doing the same thing. And soon, it was all working. <laughs> he caught big fish and little ones. One day, the fox came to get his share of fish, but the wolf said to him, Sorry, brother, this fish is stuck to my tail. So the fox went and <laughs> unstuck it. He cut the wolf's tail off and unstuck the fish. Good thing the wolf wasn't using his d for bait. <laughs> That's what happens when you play by someone else's rules. Why are you telling me your tales here? If you're so smart, then maybe you know a way out. The way out, my colleague, is through the entrance. It's time to get out of this game. Look, yeah, we have money, and what good does it do? There is nothing for us to do in this country. The number of alcoholics and morons is larger than the whole population. It's a polluted education doesn't exist, and that new auto plan <laughs> is not real. There's no other way than to leave and wipe this nightmare from our brains. To leave? And who's going to let you do this? You'll never forget this nightmare because it won't ever let you wake up. We do have money. But whose money is it? Is it yours, really? <laughs> Can you actually spend it? Or offshore it? Can you legalize it? Give it to your children? Don't lie to yourself. Don't be like the others. You're in a trap. And the trap will only open its jaws once you are good and deceased. We can buy our way out of a criminal suit, maybe a nice mansion, a few cars, expensive tutors for the kids, but that's about it. See, you're like a hamster on a wheel, no freedom to be seen while the system rolls right on. Why don't I tell you a fairy tale, my special friend?
Once there lived a smart guy like you. He found a job, settled in, and slowly rolled along with his life. Then he looked around and rolled a bit faster. He was allocated a budget and he administered it wisely. And by the rules, he got his cut. You know what I mean? Why would you ever build a fence for a million when it can be done for so much more? So he rolled on like this. The books looked good. Sometimes they didn't quite balance, but mostly it was a well-oiled machine. He'd give a taste to get off in court, give a taste to avoid an audit. He'd give a taste to whomever caught him and get away. But came the day he decided, enough. I've made enough for myself and my kids. No more risk. Everything can change. I'm leaving the game. Quietly. I need to move my money out and leave. I got away from grandma. I got away from grandpa. I got away from the traffic cop, the prosecutor, and the tax police. And I can get away from you, Mr. Fox. And what? What what? Just letting him go would have been a total loss for the fox. Nobody leaves. The fox hates feisty people. To those who want to leave, he gives a very tough time. Bounces them from the tax police to the DA to court, bleeds them dry, and tosses them in jail. You asked for it, gingerbread man. Why are you silent? Hello? Are, are you, you even here? here? Leave him alone. He looks like he's asleep. What can I say? You seem to be making some good points, so I didn't chime in. So what do you want? To win? Or not to lose? Not to lose. lose. It doesn't matter. How is it possible to win or lose in a game where the rules are constantly changing, but are never changed by you? Hmm? I want to tell you a story, too. There once was a turnip that grew very, very big. They started tugging it in different directions, but just couldn't pull it out. The turnip creaks, but it won't come out. Then one smartass said, why don't we just grab the turnip together and pull it in the same direction? They grabbed it, pulled really hard, and pulled out the turnip. It shined gloriously like the sun, so beautiful, so smooth. When the turnip was just sitting there, no one got anything at all. But after it was pulled, everyone had enough. There is one way alone for us to agree amongst ourselves to finally write some rules ourselves. And that's when it will start. Our. Game. Lo and behold, my darling friends. There is no going back. Been waiting for the end of the world? Well, here it is! Sign here! The mechanism showed signs of life and then began functioning. Through the commotion and chaos, nobody even noticed how the mind, zombified by global brainwashing, suddenly turned on and start to work! Start, 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 start <laughs> New rules, new moves, new mindset, and brand new time! <laughs> and all of you who are capable of thinking have already started updating your firmware. I see promising and significant signs of recuperation! <sighs> Suddenly and unexpectedly you began to write to me. Truly intelligent letters. The toy army turned out not to be so toyish. And they are becoming aware of it, and they're scared. Because they missed the moment. They waited till the day had passed when everybody burdened with gray matter should have gotten a pickaxe to the skull! So none of that cranial jello mold will ever turn on again! Let's all apologize to them for not living up to their expectations and hopes that we're a herd of idiots ready to obediently go to slaughter with our tongues shoved up our assholes! The viral ad actually worked! <laughs> Come on, bye, damn it! Come and get your revolution of consciousness. And anyone who's laughing at these words knows deep down inside that Freeman is right! I never wanted a revolution that was bloody or violent. I never called for slaughter, called for cold lead smearing human brains on the walls. There can be only one kind of revolution. A revolution of consciousness. And only that. All the rest is just a mindless meat grinder designed to turn flesh into moolah. I'm proud of you, friends. Those who decided not to waste their lives chasing after status or the hype or jerking off to the golden calf. Those are just the saccharine, gooey pillars of a gingerbread house with nothing but sticky walls and filthy hands inside. The old world dies, along with those who cannot understand the new. There lived a man who constantly suffered. He always felt like he was too hot or too cold, like he had too much of this and not enough of that. One day he'd feel like jumping for joy, and the next like weeping in the corner. Over time, these feelings made his heart grow callous. His body crumbled, and the thoughts that swirled inside of his head thickened. And finally, when he stopped changing at all, death came and took him away. Well, 
Did you like living? Death asked. Well, I didn't, I didn't. Life has sun and love and pleasures, but it also has coldness, disappointment, and pain. But above all, I never found any meaning in it. Death chuckled. <laughs> when you went to the land of the living, there was a meaning, but you lost it there. Okay, I'll give you a little advice on how to fix the whole thing. Just have a talk with the three teachers. They'll help you remember everything. After he said these words, death turned into a moth, and the darkness fell. The darkness was silent and dense as a rock. <laughs> I'm so scared and so cold. I'll never find anybody <gasps> in this sticky darkness. <sighs> I've been waiting for you. That was his first teacher, the Black God. He made his home down below and was darkness itself. He said the human soul continuously emits both happiness and suffering, which means the human is the ultimate cause of everything. But it's only when a human soul keeps these opposites in balance that his empire is ruled by freedom. Freedom! 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 I've been waiting for you. And this was the second teacher, the White God, who dwelt up on high and shone as bright as light itself. He taught the human that eternity is the present moment, and the future, as well as the past, are really nothing more than different forms of human memory. But only then, when a human being doesn't live in the past or run away into the future, only then is his empire ruled by freedom. Why aren't you looking for the third teacher? I've been waiting for you. I want to tell you about the black and white gods. They were talking about the same thing, but in reality, they weren't. So what were they talking about? They were talking about me. <laughs> I'm the one who decides between black and white. It is I who chooses between good and evil, between action and inaction. I and the world comprise the whole, and both of us fill one another. When I bring beauty into the world, the world becomes wonderful. And when I bring destruction, it becomes merciless. That is the meaning I remember. Well, you found the third teacher, Death said. You, yourself. Now go, and tell people about it. The Black God talks about Earth and those living on it and inside it. The White God talks about the sky and those living above our heads. The Black God helps us to be closer to our roots. The White God encourages us to move on. The Black God doesn't let us forget. The White God opens the future. The Black God is inside of you. The White God is around you. The Black God is me. The White God is me. The whole world is rocking, but it's balanced. There's no rest in anything. Rest gets destroyed by time. Rest gets destroyed by the outside world. Rest is unstable. Those who know how to keep balance by being now on the right, now on the left, now above, below, inside, outside, they are able to be above the world. It is they who are capable of being emperors of the black and white gods. Happiness always turns into sorrow. Tears always turn into laughter. Tenderness always gets rough with time. Friendship turns into love. Love turns into habit. Habit into hatred. Hatred into solace. Solace into curiosity. Curiosity into friendship. The black god turns into the white god. The white god turns into the black god. When the black god comes to light, he becomes gray like everything else around. When the white god sinks in the darkness, he becomes gray like everything else around. When the black god looks at the white god, and the white god looks at the black god, everything becomes colorful. When the black god and the white god integrate into a whole, the self 
is revealed. Consciousness is the white god. The body is the black god. I am the black god and the white god. I'm the one who remembers what has been and thinks about what will be. I am the one who is neither in the past nor in the future. I am now. The whole world is an eternal now. I am the center of this world. I am the center of my reality. How incredibly much I've missed you, my precious, darling know-it-alls. My clever boys and girls, my kitties and bunnies. I see, I see from the tears in your eyes that you haven't forgotten about your bestest buddy, good old Freeman. And that you're ready to keep on solving riddles and searching for... Messages. But we don't have much time, so let's concentrate on what's important. The world has finally gone completely bonkers. And so, today, I'm pleased to say my traveling circus is now presenting a completely new show. How guys came up with our money! <laughs> there were grandpas and there were turnips, but there was no dough. People would just exchange what they had for what they needed, like a turnip for a wagon and the wagon for a jug of wine. A simple and easy to understand system. And if there wasn't enough of something like nails or arrowheads due to the fact that almost no one knew how to work with metal, then obviously those things were worth more. Later, people started exchanging rare metals, and if someone got rich, they would carry around half a ton of gold with them like an idiot. It was inconvenient, and you could get robbed. So people decided to turn in their heavy objects for safekeeping. And that's how banks came about. They chopped up everything they got into equal chunks and introduced the gold standard. And the notes from the banks that promised the bearer metal in exchange eventually turned into paper money. It was all simple and clear. There was no way for a bourgeois to line his pockets. But, quite recently, with the help of some clever words and some wise-ass verbal gymnastics, all of the dough makers managed to abolish the gold standard. Which means they screwed everybody. <laughs> Come, celebrate, little man. In the past, you would exchange your money for actual gold. Ah, but now you'll be exchanging it for consumer purchasing power. Which means that now, currency is nothing more than ink and paper. With an order from above, to regard this typographic composition as happiness and the highest good. And those who oppose this order are wheeler dealers, instigators, terrorists, and sodomites! But I'm here to open up your eyes, my dear friends. Think now. There will not be one single atom of jest in my call to action. Now the government provides and cares for all of our streets, which is good. But that doesn't mean that you're not personally allowed to plant a tree or paint a fence. It's said that good deeds shall multiply. Also, the government prints all the lovely money. And that's good as well, because currency is the lifeblood of the economy. And the faster it flows, the more lively the economy will become. And oh yes, the good deeds, they shall multiply. Whether it's electronic money, gift certificates, or bubblegum trading cards. Everyone has the right to issue their own money. And that, my friends, is the biggest of bourgeois secrets. Some secret. Suppose John the Smith paints a hundred extraordinary pictures. He sells them all to his neighbor for 50 bucks and suddenly dies soon after. Most probably from drinking. The neighbor takes him to the city and doubles his dough by selling the pictures to some art profiteer he knows. The dealer hangs them in his trendy gallery and starts selling each one for crazy money. People ask, hey dude, why are they so expensive? He answers, John's dead, there won't be any more pictures, they're in short supply. The same crap's going on with Bitcoin. In this case, math doesn't allow an endless number to be produced. You can't just go and issue 100,000 million of them when you feel like it. Because John died, and they cost exactly as much as people are willing to pay for them. Just like some antique china, or a used pair of Stalin's underwear. So anything that there's not much of, and is difficult or even impossible to duplicate, can work as dough. And that means that almost everything around us is made out of money. It's completely nuts. 
There's also the good money of Mr. Silvio Gazelle. It works quite effectively, if you are wondering. Until people start getting shot for it. <laughs> Have you even noticed what's been happening to words? What are you saying over there? Ooh. It seems to me that your words are spoiled. They rock! <laughs> On the surface, they still look and sound the same. But do you know what the problem is with them, huh? Just take a look for yourself. At some point, people invented words in order to expand the horizons of knowledge together. But over time, look what happened. Dude 1 pushes his shitty product on suckers. Dude 2 promised to keep the peace, but came at night and slaughtered everybody. 3 falsely accused a friend to avoid the gallows. And 4 just blah blah blabbered to pick up chicks. Generations have passed, and now nobody remembers about the sacred function of words. People use them like paper to wipe the silence away. Do you remember how those non-stop don't, 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 don't repeated endlessly by your parents turned into meaningless yammering? Then you'd answer it with, sorry, won't do it again, honest, ever. I promise you. When really you weren't planning to do anything? All your, in five minutes, I started on Monday. It was the last time. I'm stuck in traffic is nothing but a pile of rustling trash. That you're always burping from your filthy mouths right into each other's ears. You've just forgotten. Your entire world consists of ideas, but you're exclusively expressed with words. If words lose their weight, the world will turn into nothing but a brothel and a circus. <laughs> The strongest words, of course, have lasted the longest. Honor, justice, truth, God. You feel it? Yes, now they make you sick to your stomach when it was not so long ago that they were sincere. And do you know who turned them into nothing but white noise? Yeah, that's right. It was lawyers, politicians, priests, and advertisers. All those who use words as tools and instruments. And you, with all your posts and your likes, you're just feeding the fire with more coal. Like, love, laughter, more, more! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! <laughs> post like, comment, post like, comment, post like, post like, quicker, quicker, fast, fast! Do you have any idea what the word fast really means? It means that you lock your trap shut and you stay silent for at least a week, not a word. But I'm afraid that your oral sphincter won't be able to keep closed. Tell me, do you really want to reintroduce meaning to your words? Then keep silent for seven or better yet ten days. I mean not even dropping one word and staying off social media. Be quiet and listen to yourself and your feelings. Because when you stop that endless defecating from your mouth, then amazing and wonderful things start to happen inside your head. But who among you has enough guts to do it? Ah, I realize now that there is nothing we can trust to give us peace amid our worldly cares. There's nothing after all save our conscience.